Howdy folks, my name's Mark Furneaux, I'm a Canadian computer engineer, and this is my YouTube channel. On this channel, I take things apart. So this is obviously a Bluetooth, all-in-one Bluetooth receiver. There's a, a small chip here, which I'm guessing is probably E squared prom or something like that um, for configuration data. Look at that, holy shit. Look at how bent that board is. And this is the power transformer, and the first thing I've got to say is this is a really sexy looking power transformer. It just looks like it's a, like a resistive element that snakes along, and then they've got um, some sort of a plastic on top of it, and then just it's just held on there with capped on. It's just taped on there. It does not take a genius to immediately realize what is wrong with this meter, and it's the thing that sort of anyone buying a cheap meter like this should know. Uh, and that is that there is no input protection at all. Some LEDs are mounted off the board. No light pipes, that's far too expensive for this. You could even see where they actually indented the plastic so that the, uh, the ICs on the back would fit in the board so they could get it even thinner. Fix things. It has zero on the bottom two pins, exactly the same, but it has 3.3 .3 volts on the top pin instead, and that doesn't make much sense. So after a little bit of uh, work with the Dremel, this is what we're left with. Break things. Actually, oh, no it isn't. Ooh. Well, that was fun. Rant about things. Honestly, if I didn't need all the IR codes and stuff and all of the, you know, the control loops that are, you know, programmed into these, I'd just fucking do this with a Raspberry Pi because this is, this is dumb. Reverse engineer things. Uh, it's got wireless N capability, which is interesting given the fact this is only a wireless G device. I, I just, I get the feeling they had a flaky end driver and they were like, fuck it, let's just use G because it works and it's a camera, who cares? It's a basically a ROM load. So there's a bit of a delay in between some of these, but it gives a chip ID. Do stuff with networking. This is actually my router. Um, there's a long story behind this machine. Um, this machine was originally a, uh, a server of mine and uh, almost 600 megabits in the other direction. And this is just a continuous test, and you can see uh, in the traffic, uh, it's been going on for uh, quite a while now. So I just uh, finished modifying the network card, and as you can see, I've taken out the pins that prevent it from getting into an X1 slot. And a whole bunch of other crazy stuff. This CPU, for about six months, still worked after I've made it into a keychain. In case you're unfamiliar with what this is, this is uh, basically uh, a one-dimensional CRT uh, is probably the, the best way to describe this. This is where MacGyver comes in. And you just insert the paper clips in between the, uh, the lever. Everything's more difficult when the screws are not in the back. Tiny integrated circuits. Although they're not actually called integrated circuits. Um, these are from 1966 and are some of the earliest integrated circuits uh, ever manufactured. Thanks to everyone who's supported me so far, and I look forward to the future. Thanks for watching.